cool guy here and his name is Forrest and he can do some amazing tricks. Isn't that cool? That is so cool. He's going to show you some things. You know, how many of you guys in this room are 11 or 12 years old? Anybody 11 or 12? Okay, that's cool. It's all those fifth graders back there. So Forrest actually started juggling when he was 11 and then he really caught on to it when he was 12. And he's 20 now, so he's had a lot of years to practice and he can do some amazing things. So friends, here's what we're gonna do is when Forrest is up here, he's gonna do these cool tricks, right? So let's try our best to like not be talking to our neighbor or asking them what they had for breakfast or how many jelly beans they ate today or yesterday or how many they're gonna eat this afternoon. So let's just really respect Forrest in his time here with us. Does that sound like something we can do? Cool. So how many of you guys are Iron Man fans? Any Iron Man fans in the house? So Forrest's favorite um, um, character, superhero, if he could be anybody, he'd be Iron Man. And you know what he really likes to eat? Crickets. Oh, that's so disgusting. He likes to eat crickets. That's kind of gross. So he's got some cool tricks for you guys. There's going to be a lot of lighting and music, and we're going to have a lot of fun together. So I want you guys to start clapping, because the louder you clap, the more he wants to come out. He's a little bit shy. Uh, that's not loud enough. I need it to be really loud, and I want you to cheer for Forrest. You know, I'm so excited to be with you guys here again. Uh, my name is Forrest, and uh, I'm just thrilled. We're going to have a lot of fun this morning. I'm going to show you all sorts of fun tricks, and uh, we're going to see some juggling tricks, and some balancing tricks, and uh, even an illusion or two. So I thought we could start off with something fun. Um, one of the things I want to start off with is a trick I'm actually going to need all of you to help me out with. Can you all help me out with the trick? Yeah! Great. Um, so I brought this rope along. And this is a pretty new trick to me, so I'm, I'm going to need everyone's help. Uh, and we're going to try to make this rope float. All right? Uh, but to do that, everyone, uh, I need you to try some spirit fingers. Does everyone know what spirit fingers are? We all go like this. So everyone, everyone try spirit fingers all with me together. So we're all going to try spirit fingers, and all together we're going to say, <gasps> Yeah. But let, let's practice. Let's practice all together. Everyone ready? One, two, three. <gasps> That was great. You can even make the silly face and everything while you're doing it. Um, so we're going to try this to see if we can make this rope float. Is everyone ready? Yeah. All right, here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Uh-oh. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. This is a really bad way to start out the show. Um, it normally goes a lot better than this, uh, but l let's try this again. You know, don't worry. We're actually going to get it to float next time. So, so maybe we can, if we really try again, maybe, you know, like really go for it. Like adults, you can all join on this one too. So let's try again. Everyone ready? One, two, three. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm sorry guys. This is, uh kind of embarrassing for me. Uh, normally, it goes better than this. Like, it wouldn't actually normally float at this point. What, what is it? I look bloated? That's really rude. You know, it's, it's float, yeah, it's, oh! It's, has it been doing this the whole time? Why didn't anyone say anything? All right, all right, uh, we're gonna try to make this, uh, let's try to make it float on both ends now. So everyone ready? We'll do this one more time. Ready? One, two, three. Woo! It's floating on both ends now. Thank you. It's just a joke for the parents. Uh, so one more time, we're all gonna say shh together. Everyone ready? One, two, three. Shh. Give yourselves a round of applause. So guys, like I, like I said before, my name is Forrest, and I'm thrilled to be with you. Um, uh, one of my favorite things to do with doing these shows, and uh, you know, I kind of travel around the country and, and do these uh, awesome shows and, and get to speak to kids and stuff, uh, but one of my favorite things to do is juggling. Now, how many of you have ever tried to juggle before? You've tried? Oh, wow, there's a whole bunch of you. Now, now is juggling pretty easy or hard? 
it's super hard, you know, it takes a lot of practice and dedication. You have to keep practicing, uh, you know, your, your throws back and forth. But if you stick with it for a long time, you can actually finally get to a point where you're able to do uh, what, what jugglers call, uh, this is a three ball cascade. I know, um, you know, when I was learning it though, I figured that I should probably learn some tricks. I should probably learn some other things to do with this as well. Uh, so I learned a reverse cascade. Ah. Another one of my favorite tricks of all time is this one. It's called uh, columns. Yeah. But you know, I was actually practicing this one day and I figured out there's an easier way to do this. So one day I started cheating. Yeah. That's when I just call confused. But I've got a whole bunch of other tricks and stuff, so uh, I'll go ahead and show those to you now. You know, you can take the ball and you can go through the middle. Does anyone want to say that again? All right, let's take it. Go through the middle and the other way and the other way and the other way and the other. Only clap for the tricks you can't do. couple other fun ones. An, uh, another classic juggling pattern is the shower pattern. To remind you to take a shower because it's Easter and we're all looking nice. Uh, you can do a couple other ones. You can juggle cross-armed one way or cross-armed the other way or wait for it, cross-armed both ways. Whoa. Not really sure what's happening anymore. Uh, you can also do uh, another one of my favorite ones, uh, is this one here, it's called Juggler's Yo-Yo. Whoa. Take it through the other way. Just like that. Uh, you got a couple other fun ones, you can do some complicated patterns, we don't really know what's going on here. Uh, you can go through again, cross armed and maybe even under the leg. Or behind the back. There we go. There we go. But you know, you know, whenever I tell people that I juggle, you know, another question is what else can you juggle? So does anyone know what these are? You got pins or jugglers like to call them juggling clubs. So we've got the juggling clubs, and I thought I'm gonna start off show you guys, uh, this is my best impression of a seal. My best impression of a seal. Okay. Huh. Wait for it. There we go. So with juggling clubs, you can do a lot of the same tricks and stuff that you can do with uh, regular bowling, or with uh, juggling balls. Uh, you can do uh, your reverse cascade. And uh, maybe even columns. Whoa. Just like that. A couple other fun ones. You know, these are a single flip. Uh, this is a single flip pattern. So you can try double flips. Maybe even triple flips. There we go. Let's try one or two other classic ones. Let's try to go under the leg, or under the other leg, or behind the back, or behind the other back. He doesn't have another back. All right, try. There we go. Well, you know, um, I like to do more than just uh, entertain you guys. We're going to have a lot of fun today. We're going to have, we're going to see a whole bunch of other really awesome tricks and stuff. Uh, but we're here for more than just having fun. What are we celebrating today? Easter. Easter. We're celebrating Easter. And uh, I wanted to go back and kind of go over the story of Easter. Because, you know, Easter was when, you know, Jesus came and we celebrate him dying for us and then raising back to life. And that's exciting, but it feels like more the end of the story. So I'm going to go back 
to the very beginning of the story uh, in the book of Genesis. Now, does anyone know the book of Genesis in the Old or the New Testament? Old Testament. It's, in fact, the very first book of the Bible. So we're going to look back at a little story here uh, in Genesis chapter 3. And Genesis chapter 3 is at the beginning. It's right after, you know, God creates the heavens and the earth. And he makes, you know, the seas and the mountains and the animals and the stars and the trees and the forests. Forests. You'll get it later. So finally, uh, he makes people and he puts Adam and Eve in this beautiful garden. And he just gives them one thing that they can't do. Does anyone know what that one thing was? Yeah, eat the fruit of this one tree in the middle of the garden. He says you can do anything else. You're masters of the earth. Just don't eat the fruit of that one tree. And this, this is when another sort of character comes in. It was the snake or serpent. That was, the, that was Satan coming in to tempt them. Because he was envious of God. He was envious of what God had with his people. Um, so that's where we pick up in Genesis chapter 3. It's the serpent talking here. He said, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat from the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden. You must not touch it or you will die. Now this wasn't, I don't think it just meant a physical death. But I think it meant, you know, a spiritual death. He was saying that, you know, if you disobeyed God, if we uh, didn't listen to him, uh, then we would lose this connection, this awesome relationship that they used to have with him. So I, I want to kind of reenact this story. I want to show it to you guys. Uh, so I'm going to need a volunteer. A volunteer. All right. Oh, whoa. Whole bunch of you. Um, how about, let's go over here. Uh, sweetie, in the, in the pink right there, you want to come on up? Yeah, everyone cheer for our volunteer. Come on up. Come on up. What is your name? Ellie. Nice to meet you, Ellie. We're going to go over here, more center stage. Now, Ellie, yeah, we're just, you know, you're going to help me out here. Uh, you're going to reach inside the bag and actually just pull out what's inside. Now, Ellie, are you nervous at all? Kind of, yeah. I know it can be a little bit nerve-wracking being in front of all these people. Mostly, I'm nervous about reaching inside this thing, so I'm going to make you do that instead of me. Okay? So, we're just going to reach in, pull out what's inside. Now, you're sure you're not too nervous? You sure? You're good. All right, here we go. Just reach inside. No! I'm sorry. I get really jumpy at this part of the show, so we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna try. Just, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. We're good. Just go ahead and reach and pull out what's inside. It's just a balloon. It's just a balloon. Now you might be wondering, why on earth would I be so nervous about this balloon? Well, it's actually gonna play, you know, a character in our story here. It's uh, my least favorite animal. And it's also known as the most disappointing balloon animal you can possibly make. Yes, we're making a snake. Don't worry, we're going to give it a little more detail. A little more detail than that. So, let's give it maybe some eyes. And a little bit of a mouth. Let's see if it looks more snake-like after this. We got it. So let's go ahead and give it a little detail. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but we've kind of got a little snake face there. All kind of see that? Yeah. So we've got our little snake here. So, El, El you're going to help me out. Because um, the snake came up to Eve and he was like, hey, you should eat the fruit. And Eve said, no, we're... Uh, we're not supposed to eat the fruit. That was the one thing God told us that we're not supposed to do. And he was like, no, you, you won't die or anything. You'll actually become like God, knowing both good and evil. He was a very animated snake. He moved a lot when he was talking. But, you know, the snake kept, kept poking at it. And finally, you know, uh, Eve started trusting the snake more than she was trusting God. And, and Adam was there and he did the same thing. And they took it and they ate the fruit. And at that point, there was this break in this relationship between Adam and Eve and God. Because right then, there was this thing called sin that entered the world. This, this sort of darkness. So here, would you like to hold this? 
How about, all right, we'll, we'll just grab this thing. Uh oh. Um, hold on, I'll just, I'll get rid of that. We got it. All right, now. We'll, we'll go, don't worry, we're not gonna pop anything else. So we're gonna take all these, you know, broken pieces and stuff. Now, Ellie, do you think you could put this back together? The broken pieces? You don't think you could just kind of like, kind of maybe glue them or something? Maybe? I don't know, I think that's, that'd be kind of tough. Uh, and just check for me, there's nothing in there, right? Nothing there. All right, so we're gonna throw the broken pieces back in there. You know, I don't think I could fix this balloon. I don't think anyone could fix this balloon. And that was kind of the way our relationship was with God. You know, it was broken and we couldn't fix it on our own. We needed someone else to come and repair that for us. And that's what we're celebrating here at Easter. So God was able to take something that was totally broken. It was something that we couldn't fix on our own. And he was able to make it. You want to pull, go ahead and pull out what's inside there? He was able to make it just like new. So Ellie, let's, let's blow this up just to make sure that this is uh, actually all back together. Because God was able to take this broken relationship and he was able to make it whole again. Amen? Now Ellie, you've been wonderful. You've been a wonderful volunteer for helping me out. So I'm going to give you a little something here for helping me out here. I'm going to measure your head. I'm going to give you some very stylish headwear. Goes phenomenally with your spring pink. It's very popular in Europe. It's balloon hats. So there you go. Everyone give it up for Ellie for helping me out. You can go ahead and have a seat. Thank you so much. So we're gonna come back to that story because you know that was the beginning of the story. That was, you know, that was some bad news that you know when Adam and Eve messed up that suddenly our relationship with God was broken. It couldn't be the way it was before. But we're gonna come back to Easter and how Easter fixes that problem and how uh, that's what we're celebrating with Jesus now. But first, um, I thought we could just uh, do another fun trick. Uh, does everyone wanna see another fun trick? Great. Now, I've showed you guys uh, just a little bit of juggling, but one of my favorite things to do with juggling is try to juggle while doing something else at the same time. So to do this, I'm going to need a couple volunteers. Uh, here, uh, I saw your hand come up uh, right there in the white. You want to come on up? Uh, let's get someone from the middle. Uh, someone sitting down. Uh, Why? Uh, would you like to help me out right there with the headband there? Yeah, come on up. And we'll get uh, one other person from over here. Uh, hey, right there in the striped shirt. Oh, no, we've got one. Over. Yep, either one of you. Fight it out. All right, come on up. All right, guys, come on up. Hey, what are you? What is your name, sir? Wyatt. Nice to meet you, Wyatt. You are Anne. Nice to meet you, Anne. That's an awesome name. That was my name when I was a little girl. And you are Grace. Awesome. So if you three just want to move over this side of the stage here, I'm going to give you each uh, one of these juggling clubs. Now what you're going to do, when I tell you to, uh, is you're going to throw the juggling club to me. Now, to be clear, when you throw the juggling club to me, do not throw it like that, or like that. We're going to hold it, you know, just kind of nicely in the middle, and just sort of toss it up for me like that, okay? This is, this is sad juggler, and then like happy juggler, just nice throws. So we're going to try to do that. Uh, but. You know, I figure, I, I said we'd be doing this while I was on, I was doing something else. So, uh, some of you might have noticed, uh, I brought this along. Anyone know what this is? It's a unicycle, also known as a uh, discount bicycle. It was half off. I like those puns. Alright, uh, so we're going to move uh, you two. Would you like to stand a little over to the right? And Grace will have you just a little bit to the left. And I'm going to hop up on this between you, so you can scoot back a little bit more. <clears throat> and uh, then one at a time, I'll get the clubs. You're going to toss them to me. And we're going to just see if this works. It might not. But uh, we'll see how it happens. So everyone give me a nice one, two, three on hopping up on this unicycle. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, oh. there we go. Step one down. Uh, do you guys want to see a trick on this unicycle? All right, ready? Wheelie. All right, 
Grace, we're going to start with you. You're going to toss it up when I count to three. All right, ready? One, two, three. Perfect. We got one. Excellent throw, Grace. All right, Anne, we're going to go with you next. Are you ready? One, two, three. We got it! All right, man. You ready? All right, we're just going to need a nice toss kind of in this area. This is a bad throw. You throw over and hit Grace. Uh, I'll be okay. No, Grace, we don't want that. We don't want that. So try not to hit Grace. Just a nice toss right in the middle here. Are you ready? All right, we're going. We're going to count to three. Let's try this again. Go ahead and hand that back up to him. We're going to get this. No, no, up to him. We're going to get the toss. You ready? One, two, three. Just like that. There we go. Everyone give it up for my volunteers. Thank you guys for helping me out. You can go ahead and have a seat. Thank you so much. So, uh, I just started a story, we kind of started in, uh, what were the two main characters in our story? Adam and Eve, right? There was Adam and Eve, and they were in this garden, and everything, everything was perfect, and they had this awesome relationship with God, but it was broken then, when they disobeyed God, and they entered uh, the sin, this darkness that came into the world. So, I want to go ahead... We're going to jump up to the book of John. Now, is John in the New Testament or the Old Testament? It's in the New Testament. Uh, so this is, John, uh, this is uh, from the book of John. And this is Jesus talking. Because, you know, all through Jesus' life, he was teaching and he was healing people. So this is one of the things he taught. Uh, it says, uh, this is John eight twelve, And it says, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And I think this is such a cool verse because it's saying, you know, first of all, it kind of recognizes the problem that, you know, we're in darkness. We're, we're in this sin. There's this stuff that gets in the way between us and God and having a good relationship with him. But Jesus was saying that he was the answer to that. He was saying that he's the light of the world and that he can get rid of that darkness. And if anyone believes in him and follows him, that they won't have to live in darkness anymore, but will have the light of life. So I wanted to come up with a way to kind of show that to you. I was trying to think of a, a trick that would show you guys a little bit of this kind of light and dark. Because, you know, ever since Adam and Eve... We've had this, this sin, this darkness. And sin is anything, anything that we do that is against what God would want. You know, it's when we disrespect our parents or when we lie or when we steal anything. You know, these are all things that we do that separate us from God. So ever since then, we've kind of been in this darkness. But you know, Jesus was saying that we don't have to live like that. We don't always have to be in this darkness. Because he was saying, if you follow me, you'll have the light of life. So I want to show you guys another trick that deals with a little bit of light.
go. Hey guys. So far I've only juggled three things. Would you like to see me juggle four things? All right. So we've got another juggling club over here. Now there is an easy way and a hard way to juggle four clubs. Which would you like to see? Hard way? All right, now, I'll be honest, guys, this might not work on the first try, so I might have to take two or three tries to get it. Is that all right? Yeah, all right, because, you know, the easy way of juggling is just I hold two clubs in each hand, and I just start juggling up like that. The hard way is that I'm gonna take this club and set it down on my foot, and then start juggling three clubs, and then I'm gonna try to kick it up from my foot, grab it, and put it into a four club pattern. Is that something you wanna see? All right. Now, like I said, this might take me more than one try, but we're going to go ahead and go for it now. Here we go. There we go. Thank you. All right. So guys, I just want to give you kind of a visual with that as far as, you know, God was saying, you know, Jesus was the light of the world. Um, and I think that's a great visual to think of because, you know, when you're in the dark, you know, what happens when you're in the dark? You can get scared, you know, you can't see very well, you kind of start running into things and you don't know where you're going. And I think that's so much of, you know, when we're living in sin, when we're living without Jesus in our hearts, we can feel kind of lost and kind of blind to ourselves. So Jesus was saying that, you know, if you follow me, you'll have the light of life that you won't feel like that anymore. So I wanted to show you guys uh, another, a little bit of a visual on this. And, uh, you know, I'm going to need uh, a volunteer to help me out. A volunteer, help me out. Hey, um, you know, I saw your hand come up real quick. Uh, and there in the plaid. You want to come and help me out? Everyone, uh, cheer for a volunteer. Come on up. Come on up, sir. What is your name? Logan. Nice to meet you, Logan. All right, come on, Logan. Uh, you come right over here. And you're going to help me kind of show this. Because, you know, what the verse is saying in John 8:12. Is that, you know, if we, if we follow Jesus, he said that we're going to have the light of life. And it gets rid of that, you know, that darkness in our lives. So I was trying to think of a way to show that. So Logan, you're going to help me out with this. Uh, I've got over here uh, a balloon. And uh, I'm not sure how well you guys can see this. But inside this balloon is uh, another black balloon. There's a big black balloon inside of there. And then inside of that one, uh, there is a red balloon inside of that. So we've got three balloons all put together. Now, Logan, do you think that you could pop just the black balloon without hurting any of the others? <laughs> See, I think it would be really hard. And, and you know, that's, that's kind of the situation that we're stuck in. You know, we can't get rid of sin on our own. We can't get rid of, you know, you can't pop just that black balloon without hurting the other things around it. So, I'm going to show you guys, uh, I was trying to think of something that could show what God, what Jesus' love was like. And you know, he said that he was the light of the world. So I tried to get something, uh, a really intense light. So Logan, you're going to go ahead and just hold this right here. And uh, I've got over here uh, something that will help us out. I was trying to think, you know, if Jesus is the light of the world, that's probably like a really bright light, right? So the most intense light I could think of was I brought a laser. Yeah, you can kind of see that. So we're going to see what happens, you know, when this uh, really bright laser comes in contact with this sin and this darkness around our hearts. So Logan, uh, I'm going to ask you, you to go ahead and throw these sunglasses on. Here, I'll hold this for just a second. You want to put those on? You look super great. You want to do some finger guns? Oh yes. All right, Logan, you look super cool now. So you want to hold that, put one hand on top, one hand on the bottom, uh, just kind of like that. Uh, and we're going to see what happens then. You know, when God's love, this super bright light, comes in contact with the sin around our hearts here. Everyone ready? Here we go. Ah! 
Whoa! Wanna hold that? Just hold that up. So we've got inside there, we've got kind of our heart, our hearts are now, you can get rid of that sin. So when Jesus' love and that light comes in contact with that sin, it gets rid of it entirely. And so that we're able to have that relationship with God again. So guys, uh, do you want to see that again? All right, Logan, would you be cool with helping me out with it one more time? Awesome. Uh, I've got another balloon here. Uh, we're going to do this one more time. You know, just in case it went a little quick last time. So again, hold it one hand on top, one hand on bottom. Just right out there. All right. So again, this is, you know, when God's love comes in contact with that sin around our heart and how it just gets rid of it. Just like that. Thank you. Logan, thank you so much for helping me out. I can go ahead and take those sunglasses back from you. Everyone, give it up for Logan for being a wonderful volunteer. So guys, you know, that's, that's what we're celebrating here today. What we're celebrating here with Easter is how Jesus came down to the world so that he could be, you know, he would be the light of the world so that he could... Uh, make a way to, for us to get rid of all that sin and darkness so that we could be back in a relationship with Him. And that's why we celebrate Easter. That's why it's so exciting. But, you know, I want to show you guys just kind of one more time um, this whole story of Easter. <clears throat> because, you know, we, we celebrate Easter for so many reasons, and I think it's the best holiday because of this. Because uh, we're celebrating how Jesus came down to, to live among us. Because, you know, it wasn't just about Jesus coming and dying for us. But he had this amazing life and this amazing ministry. And all through it, you know, he taught people and he healed people. He taught things like how we should uh, love our enemies and pray for those people who are mean to us. And how we should love God because, you know, he loved us so much and his whole life was about that. And you know, Jesus all through his life, he was healing people. He was, uh, he was feeding people. He did all sorts of incredible, amazing things. You know, we saw, uh, brought people even back to life. He, he brought, uh, he gave people sight again that were blind. But even though he did all these incredible, amazing things, there were still people that did not like Jesus. Because even though uh, he did all these wonderful things, he was saying that he was, he was God on earth. And because of that, you know, if, he was, if that was true, then they were going to have to listen to him and they were going to have to change their ways. And they didn't want to do that. So they, they, they hated Jesus so much that they actually conspired to kill him. And you know, that's, that's what Easter is about because even though that was a terrible, tragic thing, because Jesus had lived this perfect life, because he had never done anything wrong at all, because he died for us, he was able to be this perfect sacrifice. So he was able to take all our sins, all the big ones, all the little ones, all these things that created this darkness and this separation between us and God. He was able to take all of those things and make something really wonderful out of it. And that's what we celebrate here today. Because we're celebrating on Easter, not just that he came and he died for us, but he rose again. And that gives us hope that Jesus doesn't just have, doesn't just have power over sin, but he has power over death itself. So he was able to take you know, all our sins, big ones, small ones. He was able to get rid of them. Something like this. On the cross. Just like that. So that's what we're celebrating here at Easter. You know, it's not about the Easter bunny, or it's not just about candy. It's not just about all the fun things that we do, but we're celebrating how Jesus came and he died for us 
But more than that, he didn't just die for us. He, he came back to life and he rose again to give us hope, to let us know that he was God on earth. And that's so exciting. That's such a wonderful, amazing, miraculous thing that he did for us. So I want to give you guys kind of a chance to respond to this now. Um, I'm sure you guys have, I hope you have heard this story before. This shouldn't be something new to you. I mean, this is why we do church. We celebrate Jesus and what he did for us, you know, every single week. That's, that's why we all get together and we, we have church and we, we sing worship songs is because we're celebrating what Jesus did for us. So, I figure all of you fall into either one of three groups. So either one, you've already become a Christian, that you've already accepted Jesus into your heart, and that is wonderful, and we get to celebrate uh, as Christians together. Uh, group two, maybe, maybe you're not ready to become a Christian yet. Maybe you don't know what that means to accept Jesus into your heart, and this is all sounds really kind of odd to you, and I don't want to put any pressure on you guys. You know, just in, please ask your leaders, all these uh, wonderful adult volunteers that are all around you, they'd love to talk to you about what it means to accept Jesus into your heart and kind of get rid of that sin and that darkness. But group three, you know, maybe you've heard this, maybe you've come to church for a long time, and maybe you've just never accepted Jesus into your heart, and you want, and you want to do that today. So I'm going to lead a prayer here in just a second, and I just want you to pray along in your hearts with me. Just pray along quietly. You know, this isn't some sort of magical words or anything. Uh, this is just a way for us to, to let God know that you know that we are sinners and that you want to accept him into your heart. So I'm going to ask everyone if you can just close your eyes and bow your heads here. I just to be you know, respectful of your neighbors around you. And you know, if that's something that you want, I just want to ask you to pray along quietly with me. Say, dear God, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I have this sin problem and this darkness that separates me from you. But I know you sent your son Jesus to come and die for me because you love me so much. And I want to accept Jesus now into my heart and so he can get rid of that darkness, so he can get rid of that sin, so I can be back in a relationship with you. Thank you, God, for loving me and for sending Jesus even before I loved you back. Amen. Now, guys, I just ask you, just keep your eyes closed and your head bowed for just one second longer, uh, just a second longer, just to be respectful of your neighbors. But, but kids, if this is something that you just prayed for the first time, or maybe if you are interested in accepting Jesus into your heart, uh, I just want you to slip your hand up into the air. And leaders, just k take a quick glance around. Um, kids, put your hand up. And, and leaders, just see um, who you'd like to talk to a little bit later. All right, kids, thank you. You can go ahead and put your hands down. And guys, uh, if you didn't pray that prayer yet, I, I, there's not just one time, oh, you missed it. Uh, anytime you want to talk to your leaders about this, anytime you want to talk to your parents, uh, I'm, I know they would love to talk to you about what this means because this is so exciting. This is, this is why we do church. This is why we're here. So guys, you can all open your eyes again. Thank you so much for being uh, so respectful of uh, everyone else. So give yourselves a round of applause. Now, guys, we have some time left, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do uh, one last big trick. Do you guys want to see one more big trick? All right. Uh, now, this one is a little bit hard to explain exactly what I'll, I'll be doing, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of show you, if that's all right. Uh, so I've got these things over here. Uh, I've got this, this board, these two. And uh, essentially what I'm going to try to do is just stand on top of these two things and try to balance. Here we go. Whew. But hold on, hold on. I said one last big trick, right? So why don't we bring this up a little bit? Right. 
something extra while I'm up here. So uh, I'm gonna need a volunteer. Uh, I saw your hand right there in the, uh, in the, yeah. You wanna come right up? Yeah, come on up, sir. Yep, everyone give it a hand for my volunteer here. All right, do you wanna grab those three red juggling clubs? Yep, just three of them come over there. Just bring them over. Take your time. I'll do the juggling, don't worry. So just hand them up one, two, three. All right, just take a little step back. I'll need you one more time. Here we go. Here we go. Ready? Everyone give me a nice three, two, one. Ready? Three, two, one. Here we go. Man, you want to grab those? All right, go ahead and pop down. There we go. But you know, I said one last big trick, right? I don't think we've gotten it big enough yet. So, uh, hey, do you want to come over here again? Uh, I'm just going to ask you to hold this right here, keep it nice and balanced. All right, so uh, I've got some uh, plastic cups here. These are just plastic cups. Got them from Walmart. They're actually tape on them because they're breaking. It's the perfect sort of thing for this. So I'm gonna put four cups in the corners here. And then uh, I think I'll use this as well. And we're gonna try to put this up on top of it. All right, you can let go. All right, take a little step to the side. I'm gonna have you hand me some other juggling stuff in just a moment. Hold on, right there, perfect. Here we go. Yeah, it's gonna happen. Here we go. Remember, don't try this at home. Go to your friend's house. All right. All right, do you want to go ahead and grab me those three sharp, shiny things with the black handles? Because I figure it's not quite enough. If we're going for a big trick, we might as well go really big. Hand them up. All right, nicely. Gently, gently. One, two, three. All right, now run. Run for your life. Everyone give it for my volunteer. Drop me out. Thank you, man. You can go back to your seat. Here we go. All right, so while I have your attention, I just want to thank you guys again. Thank you for coming today. You know, we're celebrating here, uh, what we're celebrating here at Easter is so phenomenal. I want to encourage you one more time, you know, if you did make a decision to let Jesus into your heart, or um, if you're interested in that, please talk to your leaders again. Now, without any more ado, we're going to go for this. Everyone give me a nice three, two, one. Everyone ready? Three, two, one. One, here we go. We got it. There we go. Well, thank you, Forrest. We're so glad that you were able to join.